Hi, I'm Sean Hessinger, and this is Small Biz in 15, the show where we bring you small business success in 15 minutes or less. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy the show. Sadly, there was a time when small business owners might have shied away from hiring neurodiverse employees, concerned they couldn't complete tasks or fit in with the team. But those days are over, says Anita Murphy, CEO of OneBridge Center, a company specializing in training these individuals for the workforce of the 21st century. First, Anita, what pain points for small business owners does the hiring of neurodiverse employees address? Well, first of all, um, you know, people with developmental, I just like to start by saying that people with developmental disabilities or people with disabilities in general um, make up of 70% of the unemployed. So 70% of them are unemployed. Let's just put it that way. And a lot of people, or should I say a lot of business owners do not recognize that they're valued. So, you know, they're individuals with um, autism. Like we serve 80, I would say 80% of the people that we serve are autistic and usually they do not interview well. And so there, there is a education piece that comes into this and educating the employer and making them understand that, you know, just because they don't interview well, that doesn't mean that they can't do the work. Um, a lot of times they get overlooked for um, very technical work, which they're really good at. Um, and, you know, they can memorize things. They can, they can hold a lot of information. Not all, but a lot of them can. Um, some of them have some very unique skills. They, they can learn uh, computer programming. They can, anything to do with tech, usually they can grasp on pretty easily. Um, I think that employers should consider hiring these individuals and recognizing that, you know, they have qualities that they're looking for, such as you want someone who's going to show up on time. You want someone who's going to um, make sure that the work is done um, well, you know, and they may not necessarily be the most social individuals. And I'm just, and again, I'm just speaking of people with autism, um, but they are able to, to do the work. Um, and actually, sometimes I think science has started to prove that they are more productive in some ways. Um, people with developmental disabilities in general, though, they, they usually have those qualities where they're very loyal, will show up on time, and if they're taught the work, they will do the work. You don't have to worry about them walking out. <laughs> so. so what steps do small business owners need to take to integrate neurodiverse employees into their workforce? Oh, yeah. So I would say that, you know, and I, and I think you're more talking about how they would prepare to have an, a person with, and in, in, in this day and age, they call it a neurodiverse individual in their work, mm -hmm. workplace. Um, so a lot of it comes down to partnering with companies or agencies to, first of all, provide the education on how to work with individuals who are neurodiverse. And then second, understanding, you know, what you would need. So it's kind of hard to answer the question in regards to um, what they would need because every individual is so different. So you may have someone who is, you know, they can't, there's certain um, technology they may need for whatever the job entails. It could be um, with autism there, you know, they don't like flashing lights and things like that on, you know, that that kind of can be a deterrent for them. Um, so it just kind of depends. Every individual is different. Um, but I think that if you work with the organizations who work with people who are neurodiverse every single day, that you have a better chance with um, success. And so, you know, like even agencies like mine or companies like mine will work with an employer to place an individual who is um, developmentally delayed and, um, and, and, and provide that job coaching for them. So we don't just place a, you know, just place a person and then just leave them there. You provide the job coaching to help the individual and the employer to ensure their success. So what do you say to small business owners who worry that hiring neurodiverse employees might negatively impact their operations? 
Yeah, so that's funny because, you know, in the past, people, employers would think that. But now that is not the case because they've realized that it doesn't cost you anything extra to place an individual who, who is neurodiverse. Um, and it doesn't require any type of, it doesn't necessarily require anything outside of the box. You know, just something as simple as having a, if you have a bathroom and, you know, you have someone with a physical disability and they're able to get in and out, that's simple. You know, most businesses have that. Um, so a lot of times the individual, when they're being placed into um, a workplace, they usually come with what they need. So if a person needs a special keyboard, then the state will pay for that for them. You know, so usually individuals are coming through a vocational rehabilitation program in their state. And that um, agency will ensure that they have any type of assistive technology that they may need so that the employer is not having to necessarily bear their costs. What do you think some of the major uh, or maybe what have you heard as some of the major misconceptions maybe that employers have about neurodiverse employees? And then could you maybe debunk some of those? So I would say the first one is that, you know, the first misconception is I cannot do the work. And that is so far from the truth. <laughs> um, they can be taught to do the work just like anyone else. Um, the second thing is that they would have to spend a lot of time with the individual and teaching them. And that is why the individual usually has a job coach so that that individual can help them and be able to, you know, help them resolve any issues they may be having or challenges, whatnot. Um, the third thing is that they may not mix well with the team, which is not true either. <laughs> so um, they usually are very friendly and they like being around others. And again, everybody's personality is different, but usually the environment actually benefits from having someone who is neurodiverse um, in the workplace, you know, because it definitely um, helps them to expand their diversity. So when you think about diversity is more than just black, white, Latino, or anything like that, right? Um, we're, you know, you have to think about people who are um, disabled as well, but they bring a lot of benefits to that. Um, it has already been proven that a lot of individuals um, are, as I said earlier, you know, they are more than likely to stick with the job longer. And that's another thing they think that they're not going to last long, which is not true. <laughs> so, um, and they have higher attendance, you know, so they have higher attendance, you know, they're usually there every day on time, all the time. And they usually are, um, they, the, in terms of production, they usually do um, have very high production. And that's because they're excited about their work. They're excited every morning. Now, most, you know, most Americans are not excited about getting up and going to work all the time, <laughs> but uh, most individuals who are neurodiverse are. Maybe we've exhausted these because you, you've gone over a lot, but uh, can, can you can you think of any other uh, um, benefits of hiring neurodiverse employees that 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 you think uh, small businesses should know about? Uh, yes. So first of all, um, individuals who are neurodiverse, a lot of times um, they can't think and solve problems efficiently or not efficiently, but differently. So they bring a different perspective to the workplace, which kind of leads into my second benefit. So they are able to solve problems and, and do it and offer a different perspective, right? Um, the other thing, as I said earlier, they are loyal um, and they usually do not change jobs very often. Um, and they also fit into the culture because they are more accepting of differences and different types of individuals. Um, and, and they can do any job. They can do anything from writing. And I'm not saying all of them, of course, you know, they all have their skill sets, but they can, there's writers, there's artists. We had a, um, anim an animator at our, in, our, in our company, which is awesome. Um, and you have individuals who are 
computer programmers, you know, they can work in the community, they can do a variety of jobs. So those are the benefits that I see. I think that um, a lot of times, I, like I mentioned earlier, they feel that they would not fit into the, the culture, but they do because, you know, you don't have to constantly train them to accept other individuals that are different from them because they naturally do that. Can you think of any success stories you can share with us, um, just uh, general or anecdotally? Well, um, well, we have a client now, and I'll just preface this by saying, you know, he's trained with us, but we didn't place him, but he was placed, and he works at a nursing home, and he helps elderly individuals, you know, which is amazing. Some people would not think that someone who has, who's autistic would be able to work in an environment, but actually his personality is different. So he's very social and he's very successful at doing that. Um, he's just started doing that not too, not too long ago, but um, so far, so good. Let's say I'm a small business owner and I would love to um, incorporate uh, neurodiverse employees into my workforce. As you mentioned, uh, there's a high rate of unemployment and sometimes uh, neurodiverse individuals don't do very well in interviews. How exactly do I go about reaching out and, 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 uh, and trying to place these people with my organization? Who do I go to? Where do I, where do I start? Well, the first place that you can start is your um, state's vocational rehabilitation um, agency. Um, you can also reach out to the Department of Developmental Disabilities. They're called different things in different states. And then you can also reach out to companies like mine that provide vocational rehabilitation um, to people with um, developmental disabilities as well. And usually you will connect with them. If you go through the, the two agencies that I mentioned, a lot of times you will end up connecting with a company similar to mine. But sometimes you can just come directly to a company like mine, just, just going to that state site, you know, whether it's the Department of Developmental Disabilities or the Vocational Rehabilitation, and just searching for companies, because a lot of times these agencies will list the companies that provide that service. Speaking of companies that provide that service, let's talk a little bit more uh, to wrap up about your company and what you, what you do. Yeah, so what we do is we provide um, skills training and we put a lot of focus on computer training because we feel that no matter what position that you're in, that you should learn the basic computer skills and some advanced skills as well. So we focus on that and we also focus on job skills training. So that includes anything um, from interviewing to understanding how to write your resume. Um, we perform mock interviews a lot. Uh, we teach them soft skills because you want them to be successful in the workplace when they are placed. Um, and um, starting next month, we'll be doing job placement as well, where we'll be working with employers to place the individuals who go through our program. And now it's time for our small biz tip in 15 seconds or less. Strive to create a more diverse workforce. Diverse workforces bring together a unique set of perspectives that can help your small business grow. Thanks again to Anita Murphy, and please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the show. And please leave a comment to let us know what topics you'd like to see on future programs. For more small business news and tips, join us at smallbiztrends.com.